Where better than a former plantation to examine the legacies of slavery and the structures of racism now? And so we are, of course, working closely with our descendant community on all things. Um, and we also are really focusing in our messages on Highland the place. Monroe is important and remains a big part of what we do, but Highland the place and the stories that we tell through the people who were here, that's how we illustrate the events of American history that created who we are as a nation today. This is something that I think is sweeping across the nation and it could be the beginning of something truly, truly big. And people talk about equity all the time and I think it has to start somewhere. It's a start, it's something that's different, it's new. It's, um, it exemplifies, I think, the types of conversations we should be having versus yelling across the aisle. I look at Highland as the starting place for our family because for me, this is where our, our story starts in, the, in America. It's, an, it's, it's pretty incredible to live where we grew up because you're living right in the midst of all these presidents, the, for the founding fathers. I grew up in going past Highland. It was more of a, okay, I know this place is there. I know that um, James Monroe is a president and he has the last name of my grandfather or my grandfather has his last name, whichever. At the time, I didn't really think of the order. I just knew the connection. First thing I did was kind of take a look over the horizon, right? I'm looking at these rolling hills, and I'm like, I'm wondering if that's where they did, you know, the gardening, and went into the bookstore, looked around, saw pictures of OJM himself, and I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. The, the lady at the desk, she asked me, said, can I help you? I was like, yeah, I'm just here looking around. And I was like, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, my, I believe my family was, were enslaved up here. And I said, in fact, my last name is Monroe. And she was like, really? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, my last name is Monroe. And, you know, our family tells, me, tells us that, you know, we, we came from here. This isn't just about James Monroe. This is about James Monroe, the, slave, the enslaved there, the, the descendants that are there now. I think back to one of our, our first meetings, but my mom um, set foot on the place for the first time. And she sat at the table and she said to me, you know, I just wonder what my, I wonder what our people, I wonder what they thought about when they were here. And I realized how powerful that was because one, I'd never heard my mother ever talk about, you know, her ancestors. She was really wondering what it was like for them to work here and as slaves and not to have their freedom. And she was getting into some emotions and some, um, some thoughts that she had buried. Highland is a microcosm. Think about, you know, James Monroe as a founding father, you know, who was a major contributor to the fabric of this country, the moral fabric of this country. Um, the dualism that existed within his life also, also exists within America. But then the contradiction comes when you own over 250 enslaved in your lifetime. You can also say the same, the same about the United States of America. On one hand, you say, yeah, we want freedom and justice for all. But then you also see, on the other hand, that there, there is disenfranchisement among citizens that still exists to this day. Highland has, um, is now a place that I think of as um, the beginning of something really special and not only for me, but for my family and for my, um, my, the generations to come. Oftentimes when you get into spaces um, in college, um, especially at predominantly white institutions, things come to a boil. And the reason why I found Highland to be um, an exceptional place is because seeking with everyone there they were not afraid to address the issue at hand, and they were willing to get to the root. I've seen the work that has been done thus far, highlighting the uh, names of those who were enslaved at Highland, ensuring that they weren't just blank slates, they were people whose talents were exploited. I've seen the, the, the vision that uh, Director Bon Harper and the descendants have for the future of Highland, and I'm excited for that. Um, but although I see the vision, I want others to see the vision as well.
you have one group that says, hey, down through the centuries, we've been getting kicked. And we want to understand the reasons why we get kicked in an effort to be able to stop the kicking, but also to chart a better path where we can actually kind of do this thing together. Then you have Highland on the other side, which to many degrees can represent the establishment. When you take those two groups together and you get them in a situation where you're actually starting to talk about, okay, how can we do this, to do this thing together under the old concept of shared authority, which is powerful. Now think about how that would work in broader society. It's very important to understand the nuances and to understand that, that it is a deeper conversation than just um, it's, it was just about horrible things that happened during slavery. Not to deny it because it was horrible, but to understand that out of that horribleness, there's good that can come in this generation that can bring a spotlight to this. This is an, a moment of opportunity to educate everyone. This is an example, not only for other public institutions, but for the country, you know, on, on ways to get this thing right. And what, what, what better backdrop than Charlottesville, Virginia, to come up with a more inclusive history, a better story, uh, an, an American story. Call it what it is, an American story. So, thank you, yeah.